Hi everybody, this is Christy. I am the Intimate Warrior. I thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, I send you love. So I'm still working out the kinks on these microphones and um, headsets. I've, I'm returning a few, so, and I hope you guys can hear me is what I am trying to say. Please um, let me know if it's clear, um, if it sounds muffled, if you have any recommendations, of course, as well for headsets, microphones. I will love to hear your input on that as well. So, okay, so yesterday, right after I ended up posting that video about getting through the void, I spoke briefly about... Um, the X and mentioned how where the X's meet you have complete balance so right after I ended up posting it I was guided further where I fell upon the so I discovered the crook and uh, flail which is an Egyptian symbol or symbols that um, they used and this was actually used now, uh, this is something that I really, you know, when my journey began, I guess, I don't know, it's a little bit after my journey. Please bear with me here. Um, I guess maybe it could have been a year ago. A little bit over. Anyway, that's not, that's not important, but God ended up telling me that my, my body lies within Egypt. My body lies within Egypt. Now, I've always had a connection with Egypt. I would love to have a great adventure there one day although my ability of seeing has allowed me to remote view areas of Egypt which has been a tremendous experience that of course unless you are able to do that there's there's really no way that I can describe it or how I feel about it. Gratefulness, again, you know, words that we use nowadays in comparison to how things really are just aren't really powerful enough. And that's why it takes an experience, your own experience. And that's really what this, our path on self-discovery is, our path towards our higher self is. It's having the experience of it. That's why if you are in resistance to change, you are preventing yourself from having your own experience with yourself. You are preventing your own relationship with yourself. And that's what a lot of us a lot of us go through life doing. Not being ourself and denying ourself our own kinship. So, 
let's talk about the crook in a flail. And I've had to, of course, do my own research on this. And as I did so, I was like, this is it. This is it. Now, when you become really open, or open and then aware and trust what you are, what you need, what you're being guided to, the information that you fall upon is going to make sense. It's the same thing as when, if you are feeling very sad or alone or you're going through a situation in life and then you think about someone or you you are in need of someone and then it's like out of the blue out of nowhere that person arrives at the moment it could be a stranger it could be someone a best friend it could be someone that you haven't spoken to it doesn't matter the possibilities are endless And this is the same thing. You know, the universe is always working in our favor to help us and urge us and push us and encourage us to move along and trust our ourselves and trust our lives. So the more that you can get in tune with I'm having this idea, I'm having this emotion, and now this is here before me, and knowing that you are creating this knowing that the universe is bringing it towards you because you've already thought about this you are in need of this you are ready for this you're learning to remove resistance you know like early on in my process when I was for some reason I can't remember of course I was being drifted towards, well, of course, consciousness was the first thing, and then opening up to the chakra system, learning about the chakra system. And the first thing in my mind, though, was, ugh, this is totally wrong, or it makes sense, but I know that other people in my life or in general are going to be critical of this if I ever b began to believe in it so really I shouldn't even go and venture this route but I began to trust it felt right instead of continuously falling back to my mind that was trying to limit me I began to feel more with my heart how it was making me feel when I was reading things and also if I began to feel fear when I was reading things I didn't take that as a sign that I shouldn't be learning about what I was reading I asked why Because oftentimes, if, if we were to just shut down things because, oh my gosh, we're feeling fear, we could be missing a whole lot more. Well, of course we were missing a whole lot more. When I was afraid of the water because I was afraid of drowning because I've had past experiences of drowning, and if I never had conquered my fear, I would never go into the water. I would miss out on opportunities that the water could provide me other activities with my family and whatever. You prevent yourself from knowing something as a result of fear. Ask yourself why you have something. Why are you feeling this way? Why are you thinking this way? Always learn about yourself. That's what this is about. And that is what the crook and flail is about. Now I am going to be reading off of Richard Cassero.com here and he it, he has an article here and it's labeled the Esoteric Symbolism of Egypt's Crook 
end, a flail. He wrote this article back in July the 14th of uh, the year 2017. Now, I'm not going to read the entire article, of course. Um, but I'm going to grab some words here. So he begins with, Egypt's crook and flail staffs were often depicted in the hands of the pharaohs. And I've often seen this. And I've often seen it displayed this way. It's mostly under on the burials. Well, where I have noticed it, of course. It's placed over the chest in the form of an X. But it's also the reason why the very dead were placed in their coffin, hands crossed over. Um, and basically this is these are two types of material possessions or tools that a seeker can use to transform his or her lower animal self into a servant of his higher in spiritual self. Egypt's metaphysical doctrine taught that humans should not identify primarily with their physical animal lower self. Instead, we should focus on redirecting our spiritual divine higher self, which is one we really are. And this is the type of Buddha or Christ within concept. And this is it could be hard for people to take this is that and I think it's Asur and, and excuse me if I'm not pronouncing his name properly which is also known as Osiris Asar, I think it's Asar maybe Asar is if I am correct, the I believe that the Greeks changed Asar's name to Osiris. There's been lots of change, a lots of cover-ups throughout history to really keep people away from the truth. So. Asar was the very first individual that performed a resurrection or experienced a resurrection. Although in Egypt and with Asar, the resurrection is an internal process unlike the story that we have heard about Jesus that dealt with a physical body dying and re being reborn um, awakening again from the dead So then that's not what this video is about, so I'm not even going to go there. You all need to or should learn as much as you possibly can. You take in information and you kind of dissect it and see where you find truth, what resonates with you, remove what doesn't, keep what does, hold no judgment. It all works out for its greatest form and regardless all information takes you to your own personal truth and that is what this is all about getting you to your truth 
let's see, I was supposed to read. So as I was saying, in Egypt there was a spiritual model in the form of a person who had achieved his Buddhahood or Christhood. He did so by using the crook and flail, as will as you know I'll explain further here. But his name was not Buddha or Christ, it was Asar, like I just mentioned. And there's a quote here um, from Joseph Campbell. We are all manifestations of Buddha consciousness or Christ consciousness. Only we don't know it. The word Buddha means the one who waked up. We are all to do that, to wake up to the Christ or the Buddha consciousness within us. And this is what the crook and fail is about. Is about. And it is precisely, again, what I ended up speaking about where the intersection is of the X unites. If you notice where the crook and flail rests on the chest of the pharaoh or any of the Egyptians who practiced this, where they meet, where that X intersects rests right over the heart. This concept is the same concept of what I have spoken about in the past about the pillars of Jekin and Boaz and through the center pillar which is through the heart is complete balance. You have the left and the right you have the male and the masculine on either side of us and in the center is complete balance and that is what the crooked flail is signifying as well the crook is a cane with a hooked handle sometimes gold plated and reinforced with blue copper bands. The crook was used by shepherds. The hook of the crook served to hold a runaway sheep. The crook symbolized the concept of rule as it serves as a hieroglyph for the Egyptian word rule or ruler. However, rather than ruling over others, the crook seems to have also conveyed the idea of ruling one's lower self by gently guiding one's own behavior upward. This is how one becomes an osiris or a sar. However you pronounce that, please excuse me. The shepherd's flail, in the other hand, was the flail or the shepherd's whip, a rod with three attached be beaded strands. The flail was a simple agricultural tool used to threshen or beaten grain from the ear by hand as it was also a weapon. Yet, here it doesn't seem to have been an outward weapon used on others, but rather a weapon one might use on their own lower nature to aggressively whip one's lower self into line. The two opposing yet complementary concepts described here is a mercy and severity. Mercy signifies the crook, severity the flail, which is also what I just spoke about with Jack in and Boaz. One represents mercy and one represents severity. Mercy is conveyed by the crook, as the crook is a merciful way to gently guide a straying, straying animal back to the fold. Severity is conveyed by the flail, as the flail is a severe way to reprimand a rebellious animal and force that animal back into line. In this way, these two tools help to mercifully and severely guide the animal the lower animal that is you, your lower animal self. The crossing of the two staffs above the chest has various meanings and connotations, but 
the one most per pertinent to our discussion is the act of combining their power together showing that they have equal strength so that's what I, I have already explained in my previous video the intersection complete balance everything nothing um, using both left and both right, using both good and both bad, using, um, you know, light and dark, masculine and feminine, and really learning all about who you are. So in um, the symbolism of, in Egypt, of course, is that the portraying of the hands or the chest or the tools over the chest is signifying that the individual used the power of these two tools, the ideas behind these two tools to master his or her self and to become an Osiris or a Buddha or Christ. And this, these two tools, signifying, um, signify the steps that they followed to become one with their higher self. So I really hope that this Let's see, Gary Osborne ended up quoting here. I'm going to read this and then continue on. What has not yet been acknowledged is that again, the crook and the flail are duality symbols, symbolizing the opposites of positive and negative, male and female, yang and yin energies, and forces. The flail is held by the right hand connecting to the male related left brain and the crook is held by the left hand connecting to the female related right brain. Now the reason why they were seen as symbols of power and kinship was because being held in this way they point where the crook and flail were brought together in the point where the crook and flail crossed over each other at the heart or the center of the body symbolized the neutral point of balance, a condition that can lead to the rebirth associated with enlightenment and resurrection and one's a vertical alignment with the heavenly kingdom, the Godhead, the source center of creation. So, how does this pertain to my life? Receiving the X, receiving this. Because now there is an image here that I am actually looking at of an Egyptian statue at least where the X is uh, being formed and it's as big as the individual is or this statue is. The the crook and flail are over the chest, where the heart is, which also is where the intersection of that X unites over the heart. And there's also a center line crossing through. Um, this is the polar opposites also signifying the winter solstice and the summer solstice and the center is R is the equinox. So pertaining to myself in my journey, I have um, explained to you guys back in the video of my seven levels of initiation video, that is, where I experienced my death. I have not experienced a rebirth yet. Or my own resurrection. Now, 
and I mentioned this in another video. We often, throughout our journey, I think I have, I have, or I'm having deja vu. We will feel like we are dying, but then we will awaken. We will feel like we are dying, and then we will awaken. It continuously happens, the cycle of death and rebirth. But I know that because of my the death that I experienced where my head was being blown um, and I was being set on fire go back and listen to my seven levels of initiations video please it's towards the end of that video it's pretty lengthy if you don't have the time to listen just kind of fast forward to at least the last 20 minutes of that video and check it out I felt it. It was very, it was terrifying. Because, of course, it was so real that I actually thought I experienced it. But I did experience it. And it completely changed me from that moment on. And I knew in time something else was going to take place my resurrection. So I am still not there yet. Um, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I know that as long as I continuously move forward, doing what I have been doing, learning all about myself, taming my own personal beast, my demons within, the things that I don't like about myself, getting rid of those negative emotions as best as I possibly can, getting rid of the negative thoughts from within my mind as best as I can. I know I'm going to get to the point where I need to be. And that's what we all are supposed to do. So I, I wanted to just give you this type of understanding. You can go check out this website and, and read more about it. It's from what I, you know, when we learn or when we are facing ourselves, facing what we don't like, facing what we love, that is how we know who we are. And then, therefore, that is how we choose which way we're going to go. I don't like that I am thinking this thought. I don't like that I am making this decision in my life. This decision is weighing me down. This one makes me more fulfilled. I am not going to do this to please others because I know what's going to make me feel bad. I'm going to stand up for who I am, what I like, what I don't like to do, and do what I like regardless of what other people are going to think about me. It's not easy making the right choices based upon your own life. Especially if you're living with other people, especially if you're continuously around others. It makes it difficult. But this is your life. We're not here to be people pleasers. We're here to love regardless but not to please others. There's a difference between loving people and then pleasing people. You get into a habit of continuously pleasing others 
and not looking out for your best interest, you end up losing yourself. You end up taking in their burdens, their ideas, their needs over your own. You end up getting washed out. You end up getting lost. You end up getting depleted. And now since I'm going this way, remember the new moon in Taurus is about all about self-love, self-care, rest, slowing things down a bit, really digging deep and dissecting things, knowing what it is that you want and standing up for what you want. For the past two days, I have actually been feeling very sluggish, which is the opposite of what I'm usually feeling. Very tired. My body is saying rest. That's the energy that's already coming through. It's time to slow down a little bit more because in time, things are going to begin to progress at a faster rate. This new moon is giving us a time to really heal ourselves at a higher level here. Take advantage of it. Listen to your needs. I've actually canceled a, an engagement this morning. Rearranged some things just so that I can rest today take a little time to just kind of be and um, we are having a cookout a little bit later this afternoon so um, all that's still going on but I didn't want to be overworked today because I am feeling the need to slow down that's how you begin to learn the process of who you are and what you want out of this life and when you know who you are and what you want out of this life you can give the best of who you are to others. And that is what true love is all about. This is Christy. Much love, health, and healing your way. I am bringing purpose to your life. Take care.